Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to automatically number the records in your continuous form. So if you have contacts or orders or part numbers or whatever, and you want to have them automatically numbered starting with 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, this lesson will show you how to have Access automatically calculate that and renumber it if you delete and add new records. Today's question comes from Julian in the UK, one of my Learning Connection members. Julian says, is there any way to number records in order starting with one and counting up? I need the list to renumber itself when I add or delete records. Auto numbers won't work, obviously. Yes, of course, Julian, there's a couple of different ways to do this. Now, in one of my previous Tech Help videos, I showed you how to create your own custom sequential counter number where you can start it at any seed like 101 and have it count up. But this only works when you add new records, and if you delete a record in the middle, you have a gap. That's one of the problems with this method. I used orders in this example, and one of the things I talked about in the video is it's not always wise to allow your users to delete stuff. You don't want to delete orders. Just mark them as, as deleted, a soft delete. Mark them as invalid, for example, or canceled. Okay, but sometimes you have a situation where deleting records is okay and you'd want this list to renumber itself. Now my buddy Alex put together a tip a while back called using a row number in a query. And this is the method I'm going to show you right now. He automatically numbers the rows using this technique with dcount. Let's see how this works. Let's start with a copy of my blank customer template. You can find a copy of this template down below in the description. You can download it from my website. It's a free download. And for this example, it really doesn't matter what the records are. They could be orders. They could be products. They could be anything. So let's just take a look at our customer list. Now, we already have them in here with auto numbers. But let's say we delete a couple out the middle. Okay. Oh, I, I have this form set up so I can't delete items. Let's go back to design view here and make it so that allowed deletions are okay. I like to make it so that you have to open up the customer record itself to delete stuff. But, all right, let's say I delete two out of the middle here. All right, now I got one, two, five, six. And if I add someone else down here, notice it's now seven. Okay, but I've got a gap. So I want a row number on here that automatically shows a sequential numbering system. So I can see exactly, for example, how many there are. Yeah, I could look down here, but I want a row number. So how do I do that? Well, let's go into design view and let's add another field out here. And let's just grab a blank text box, drop it in there. I'll just delete the label. All right, slide you over here. Okay, and this is where I'll put my counter. Okay, so open that guy's properties up. And let's call it my row number. And what should the control source be? Well, the control source is going to be equal to D count which is the domain count function. If you've never used dcount before, I've got other videos on dcount and dlookup. They're very similar. Go watch those videos first. I'll put links down below in the description. What do we want to count? I'm going to count the number of customer records. So count any field. You could count star if you want to. All right, that says count all the records. Or count a specific field, like customer ID. It's an auto number, so every record is guaranteed to have one. Where are we counting from? We're counting from the customer table. Now, what's the criteria? The criteria is I want all the records that came before this one. Okay, so the customer ID has to be less than the current customer ID. Just like that. All right, see how that works? Okay, decount the records, customer ID, any field, or even a star from what table the customer t where the customer id of that record is less than the current customer id okay let's save it and close it and see what we got close this up save that close it and let's open up the customer list okay all right little work to do but if you take a look here take a look at this guy right how many records are less than that id one zero okay so that's fine that that's correct we just need to add one to this value now right because that's a one, two, three, four. This should be one through five. So let's add that one now. Design view. Come back into here. Let's tack a one on the end. Save it. And let's see what it looks like now. Better. Okay, better. What about this pound error at the end? I don't want to see that. Well, if this guy over here 
is a new record, that means it doesn't have an auto number yet. So all we have to really do in, is check and see if this is null. And if it is, leave that null or blank. And if it's not, put the calculation in there. All right, so design view. Let's wrap this guy inside an if function. I, I, F, again, the immediate if. I've got videos on that. Go watch that if you've never used it. If is null, what? The customer ID, put it in brackets. Then, oh, someone's beaming in here. It. <laughs> One of my alarms in my office. All right, if is null the customer ID, then, with the comma, what do I put in here? Just null. Otherwise, comma, do that decount function. And then end parentheses way at the end there. Oh, I'm missing, I'm missing something here. If is null, oh, i got to put a parentheses right after this guy here, too. There. I know it gets a little confusing sometimes. All right, if, immediate if, if is null customer ID, then use the value null, otherwise use the value decount plus one. Okay, so let's save that, close it up, open it back up again, and there we go, perfect. Now, if I add someone new, notice I get a six. Add someone else, there's my seven. It takes a second to pop up there, but it works. If I delete people in the middle, delete, the numbers will recalculate themselves. You might have to requery it. So if you open it up again, there, it'll requery itself. But if I delete this guy, all right, four stays in there for a second. We could probably force a refresh or a requery. Right, come into here, design view, open this guy's properties up. Now go to the events tab, go to on delete like that. Hit the dot, dot, dot button. That'll open up your Visual Basic Editor. Pick Code Builder if it asks you. And in here, just put me.refresh. That says, after I delete the records, do a refresh. Recalculate anything that needs to be recalculated. Okay. Save that. Come back out here. Save that. Open it back up again. All right, let's add a few records. Adding stuff is not a problem. Now, if I delete something in the middle like this guy, delete, that refresh takes care of refreshing the calculations. See that? There you go. Now, if you want to number the items in a subform, it's pretty much the same thing. It's a little more complicated. Let's say here, for example, I've got this uh, contact history. Okay. Now, this only shows you the records that are related to the customer. And if I open up the contact table, you can see there are more records in here. There's customer one and customer two. So it's the same kind of calculation. You just also have to take into consideration the parent ID, okay, the related records ID. So let's go to that contact subform, which is this guy. All right, we're going to do something very similar. All right, add some, uh, some room in here. Drop in a text box. Okay. Right about there. All right, now, what's this guy going to be? This will be our, again, our row number. What's the control source now? All right, so it's going to be, we'll start off, I like to start off with the simple stuff. So equals, right, our D count. What am I counting? The contact ID from the contact table where the customer ID equals the current customer ID, right, and the contact ID is less than contact ID, okay? Then we have to add one to that, remember. Actually, let's wrap that inside of an NZ. I like to wrap it inside of an NZ because if that returns a, um, a null value, then you'll get a zero, all right? So comma zero, like that. Now that whole thing, we have to add one to it, okay? And then we can do the if, right? So if is null contact ID comma null comma the rest of that. Okay. I know it looks pretty crazy. Here, let me zoom in so you can get a, a good look at it. There it is. But if you break it down into its individual pieces, it's not too it's not too bad. It's not too hard. All right, you got your your Decount, wrap that inside of an NZ, and then put your is null out here and wrap that whole thing in an if statement. Okay. <laughs> There's a lot, of, a lot of different functions here to learn. And now let's take a look at our uh, customers with contacts. And it's too 
big to fit in that little subform. So let's make this bigger. Open up. Say ah. Okay, save that. Open it back up again. And there you go. One, two, three, four, five. We need our, our delete, right? Delete that. Oh, this one also is set you can't delete. Okay, let's put our delete in. Uh, design view. I'm going to change the template so we can... I, I think the example that I was using for this, I didn't want deletions. But you can use you can have deletions. It's okay. And we'll put our on delete event in here. Event on delete dot dot dot. Code builder if you need it. Me not refresh. It says recalculate everything that needs to be recalculated. Don't mess with the copyright notice. All right. <laughs> All right, here we go. Boom. There it is. Delete. Renumbered. Now, there are some drawbacks to this method. You don't have a way to control this numbering at all. It's based on the ID, so you're literally going to get these the order in which they're added to the table. Okay? If you want, you could base that on the date time as long as you have unique date times. Okay? Uh, if, if two records get added with the same exact date time to the second, you'll get two numbers that are the same over here. Okay? So if you want to be able to control that numbering at all, you could use dates. However, a better way to do it, if you want to be able to control the numbering, is to set up your own custom numbering field. But then again, you need events for when you add a record, which I showed in that other lesson, auto numbering the record. But then you also have to renumber it yourself every time you make a change, if you want to change the numbering, or if you make an addition or a deletion. That I will show in the extended cut for the members. If you want to learn more about numbering your records, there's a 22 minute extended cut for members only, silver members and up. I will show you how to add a manual sort order so you can control what order these records appear in. Access will automatically sort them for you the first time if you want, but then you can change them. We'll make a renumber button to do a manual reorder. You can of course change the value if you want to by typing in a number in. We'll make buttons plus and minus, so you can click on a record and go plus, plus, plus. It'll move it up in the order or down in the order. And of course, we'll have events for all those things, deleting records and so on. So that's all in the extended cut. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. We're getting close to 100, so there's lots of, of material available for members. How do you become a member? Click on the Join button below the video. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, live video and chat sessions, and other perks. After you click the Join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. But don't worry, these tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, and feel free to share it wherever you think it might help people who are interested in access. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to be notified every time I post a new video. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link below to join my mailing list. Click on the Show More link below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over three hours long, and you can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1, and that is free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and you can send me your question there. If you have a specific problem you need help with or you'd like to discuss having a database built for your needs, I do offer one-on-one -on -one consulting. Be sure to follow my blog and find me on Facebook, Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.